Hey guys, week two in the CFL. This is the Ches and Row show where we break down all the CFL games on the slate for 2022. How are you doing, Ches? I'm good, buddy. How about how about the uh, the big row and Ches show? It sounds like a little. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Show. Let's let's yeah. add that in there. I uh, hope you guys were tuning in on Tuesday. Uh, we gave out a couple of lines where we were heavily leaning towards uh, looking at, and those lines have moved big time. Uh, so uh, we're going to get to those a little bit later, but we'll start off. This is Thursday, so we'll start off with a Thursday night game. We've got the Toronto Argonauts uh, with their season uh, season opener here, uh, hosting the Alouettes. This line opened with the Argos at minus 2.5, uh, just over a field goal now, sitting at minus 3.5. Uh, totals moved up as well, open at about 46, sitting at 49.5 or 50 at most books. Uh, big questions, though, of course. Uh, Alouettes are going to be without William Standback for uh, the next few weeks, probably about a month and a half. Uh, Argos, uh, Argos have a few new faces on offense there. Andrew Harris, Brandon Banks, uh, big names there, but those guys are also pretty old and uh, might take a little while for them to kind of uh, – uh, get on board with uh, what the uh, Argos offense is doing there. So uh, what are you uh, taking when you look at this game, Chez? Yeah, the way I cap this game is these teams are probably pretty pretty close on a on a uh, on a on a on a without a home field advantage. They're they're pretty tight. The one so the one advantage that I, I see right away that's that's probably worth more than three and a half points. And the reason I lean with lean Argos Mm-hmm. is uh, the fact that they've had two weeks to prepare. That's that's the really big one for me. Think Thinking about, you know, I, I think I've said before, but for sure in training camp, when you are when you have a bye the first week, and I've, I've had this before in my career, you're basically preparing for, or even if it's not the first week, you're preparing for that team during your bye week, and then you have this week as well. So really you have two weeks to prepare. That's a big deal in football. So rest and then two weeks of re- preparation – uh, I think that's worth more than three and a half points. If these two teams uh, are close to even with their rosters, which I think they they really are, uh, that's a big deal for me. I, I would lean Argos. I, I don't think I'm touching. I'm a halftime guy. So I will probably lean to see what happens at halftime and then go from there. But uh, my lean is Argos because of the preparation and the time. Yeah, it definitely, definitely makes a lot of sense because uh, that rest's a big deal. But uh, so, like you said, so is uh, being able to actually have – two weeks of uh, game planning for this uh, matchup. Total seems high, too. So Total seems a little high, too, bro. With two it does. Yeah, I, I, hit, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, I, I was thinking about that earlier as well. I hit that earlier this week. I uh, hit the over, but it was at 46 when I hit it. Uh, now it's uh, hitting 50 at some books, 49.5 at most. Uh, you know, just causing me to, you know, kind of perk my ears up a little bit there. Uh, that Montreal defensive line is good. Uh, stand back injured, of course. Uh, then you're looking at the Argos. Like I said, uh, could be a little bit of uh, working out those kinks on offense first week of the year. All right, let's kick on over to tomorrow's game. Uh, it's a big one. Blue Bombers, Red Blacks. Uh, this is a home and home uh, mashup. We had them in Winnipeg last week. Uh, Winnipeg was a big time favorite in that one. Uh, Ottawa almost got the win. Winnipeg had to come back down the stretch. Backup QB led them down the field. They kick a field goal win with uh, less just a few seconds left on the clock. Now the uh, venue switches over to Ottawa. Ottawa is at home. Uh, this is a big one because we talked about this one on Tuesday. Uh, Winnipeg opened as a favorite of minus 7.5. It was minus 6.5 when we talked about it. Uh, we were talking about how much, you know, so many of the Sharps are on Ottawa in this one. You were saying that you even liked them on the money line, I believe. Uh, now we're seeing that line at minus 2.5. Uh, so is the value kind of completely gone from this? Or uh, what, do you, what are you thinking about this line now? Yeah, look, home field, home field here at Ottawa, that's that's a place uh, that's tough to play. And I also think they have they have more playmakers right now outside of the wide receiver position than, Hamilton, than Winnipeg does. So I just – if Winnipeg's going to win, and let's not forget, Winnipeg's a championship team. They have a great offensive line. Their coaches are, are excellent. So they can scheme their way to a win. But can they scheme their way – uh, to overcome big plays from Ottawa uh, and also the home field advantage. I don't know. Uh, it's uh, It was a definite play at plus six and a half, and, and I think I got plus 200. Um, nice. But now at two and a half, I don't know. It's I don't I don't love Ottawa at, at, at plus two and a half, and I don't love Winnipeg. I don't know. If, I think it's, again, that might be a no play. might have been late on that one. Tune into our, our Tuesday show to get the early yeah, line there because CFL lines move a, a whole lot more. There's less – Less folks banging these lines and, and the folks that, uh, you know, I know my buddies and they're hitting it pretty hard. 
Uh, and there's lines, lines are moving pretty quickly. So I uh, got to kind of get these numbers early. Absolutely. And that's why we're doing uh, the show twice a week. So uh, get in here early if you want to get ahead of that line movement. Uh, we'll be talking that about a little bit later with the last game of the week as well. I'm with you on this one. I think the lines moved a little bit too much. I think at this point, I might even be leaning towards the Blue Bombers because we know they can win those tight ones. Uh, but, you know, Ottawa Masoli looked so good last week. Uh, and he was really completing a lot of those deep balls against that uh, bomber secondary. So uh, definitely something to watch out for there. Uh, moving on over. Oh, to let, the- let me add. Let me throw this one in for a minute, bro. Just a thought. I just yeah. thought about this. I'm a. Those who know my NFL stuff, I'm I'm a I'm a second half guy. I'm a live I'm a live guy. So a lot of the stuff I will play at halftime. Um, I don't mind. I probably won't post the halftime plays because I just I'm I'm working on. I'm working the game live on at the, at the network at, at TSN, so I don't I don't post them usually live. But if you if you DM me at the, as the second half is getting close to or the first half is getting close to an end or halftime, I I uh, I will message my buddies and, and folks sometimes and tell them which way I'm leading if I have time. So uh, if you're good enough to tune in here and and uh, join us, then I probably can get that off if I can and have time. Nice. Yeah, that's uh, sometimes where the best value lies when you can actually see what these teams are doing and the game plan they're uh, moving with in the game. Uh, yeah, so first game on Saturday, uh, we've got the Hamilton Tiger Cats hosting the Calgary Stampeders. Uh, Tiger Cats open is uh, minus 2.5 chalk, sitting at minus one right now. Uh, total open at 45.5. It's now at 45. Uh, that's interesting because as we saw last week, all the totals moved up about four or five points. Almost all the totals this week have moved up at least a couple points. This is the first game of the year that's uh, actually seen the over-under slightly drop. Uh, so we're getting it at 45 right now. Uh, Ticats defense was really good at the beginning of uh, last week's game against the Rough Riders. Then they kind of let the floodgates open in the uh, fourth quarter there. Uh, Stamps, uh, Stamps team, of course, is, uh, is coming off that uh, close, close win against the Alouettes. Come from behind win in the uh, CFL season opener. So uh, what are your thoughts on this one there? Yeah, this this is the play at the beginning of the week that uh, I like more than any other. And that was the under in this game. It's, uh, I think, a really good defense in Hamilton. I, this is all kind of Hamilton-based, to be honest. It's it's a really good defense in Hamilton. And then the way after watching them in, in week one, they couldn't run the ball. Uh, they couldn't protect Dane Evans. So... You know, the things they need to do in their game plan on offense, talking about Hamilton, is is you know, quick passing game and running the ball, which both are you know conducive to to under. So I, I again it's mostly Hamilton and and I don't see Calgary being uh, super explosive offensively and they're a, a decent defense. So I think this game's going under and I like to play it quite a bit. Yeah, me too. And I, I think it is says a lot that uh, the Sharps haven't hit the over on this one, I think we could say, since uh, it hasn't moved up uh, as much as any of those other games we've seen. Watch uh, Dylan win, by the way. If you watch, if you like D-line play, watch their D-tackle Dylan win. He's an absolute monster and doesn't get talked about enough. He's a beast. Yeah, yeah those all those defensive tackles uh, in Hamilton are just amazing. Uh, really, really good to watch those battles in the trenches there. Uh, yeah, final game on the week. We've got the Rough Riders taking on the Elks. Uh, this was another one where we mentioned the line was going to move, and it moved big time. Uh, Riders were uh, five-and-a-half-point favorites uh, earlier in the week, uh, you know, coming off that dominant uh, win against the Ticats when they took things over in the fourth quarter. Elks coming off that ugly, ugly loss uh, to the Lions. Uh, now this uh, number sitting at minus eight for the Riders who are on the road. Uh, total has moved up from 46.5 to 50. Uh, this is another one where I feel like the value is kind of dried up. I was all over the Riders earlier in the week. Uh, minus eight, though, more than a touchdown has me a little bit wary. Uh, what do you think, Chess? I agree with you. Early in the week, I was I would lean Sask. But even when, I don't know if they're sharps, but even if a lot of guys were, were jumping on Sask, uh, thinking this was a, a sure thing, I, I wasn't. I wasn't so quick to jump on it. I don't. I don't think as we know how it is. Overreaction, guys. With massive overreaction, Edmonton was as bad as you could possibly be. Their quarterback uh, stunk. Their defense stunk. They don't. They don't look like they had uh, anything. You know, offensively, continuity, anything, um, and bust solo the field. But that being said, they have a pretty good staff there. A really good staff there. Now they're at home. Uh, I think. I think you're foolish if you think this is a at, at eight. It's a lock on the Riders. I'm, I can't play the Elks because I don't trust them. But uh, if you think that this is locked with the Riders, I, I think you're foolish. And you're probably, to be fair, 
if I had to play this game, there's probably some value in taking the Elks. I, I wouldn't love it because of what I saw, how bad they were, but I would I'd take the Elks. And by game time, I might even sprinkle something at eight, eight and a half, depending on what happens. But I might, I might even do it. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a, a good point because, like I said, I loved the Riders at minus 5.5. More than a touchdown definitely has me uh, has me looking in the other direction. And, I mean, looking at uh, looking at the rest of the schedule for them, it could be a bit of a look-ahead spot for the Riders. Uh, after this game, they're playing next uh, Thursday, I believe, on the road in Montreal. Uh, so it could be a sort of situation where they're uh, prepping for that one and uh, maybe overlooking the Elks a little bit. So, uh, yeah, that's that's kind of wraps it up for this week. Uh, like we said, uh, probably Chez's uh, most confident play that with the numbers we're looking at the board now, it's probably the under in uh, that Ticats game, Chez. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, and as far as it goes, I mean, looking at all these numbers uh, across, uh, the best value was gone on Tuesday in two of the games. So uh, be sure to check in on Tuesday, guys. Uh, best of luck at all the bets you make this weekend. Uh, we had a pretty good week in week one, so let's uh, let's keep it going the rest of the year. I'm uh, I'm excited to make a lot of money in the CFL. Cheers.